Thank you, Mr. President. I move that when this committee to arise, Senate File 149 be recommended to pass. On that motion. Thank you, Mr. President. Senate File 149 is further uh, reform for our uh, justice system. What it would uh, provide, Mr. Mr. President and members, is that folks that file trade practices, consumer fraud, and false advertising claims actually be able to show that they've suffered some actual damages. So some actual out-of-pocket -po cost. And then it also allows that if the district court decides to certify a class action to move forward, that that decision to certify the class be um, immediately appealable to our Court of Appeals for review to make sure that the certification is appropriate and make sure that parties do not have to go forward in a class action manner, which is very expensive and time consuming, um, without there being further review available. Further discussion on Senate File 149. Senator Cohen. Um, Mr. Chairman, would uh, Senator Ortman yield? Senator Ortman will yield. Mr. Chairman, Senator Ortman, just to get this started, could you explain what the problem is and, and what's going on in Minnesota that would necessitate this? Senator Ortman. Mr. President, I knew somebody was going to ask me that question because I've heard it asked in all of our committees and I've heard it asked on this Senate floor. Senator Cohen, I believe we are policy makers in the state of Minnesota, that it's not necessarily a uh, victim solution or problem answer that we should be looking at. I do think these are reasonable reforms and policies for our state. I have been a trial lawyer on both sides, plaintiff and defendant, and I have seen that there has been a real problem in this area. I have seen plaintiffs file lawsuits with no actual damages, and the courts spend a tremendous amount of time resolving those issues. It's very expensive for our system. It's very expensive for our litigants. I also have seen what happens when a class gets certified, Senator Cohen. Oftentimes a class gets certified and the defendants, because of the enormous cost of managing a lawsuit with a class in it, often will try and settle that case for nuisance value because it's way more expensive to litigate. That's not a good policy outcome for the state of Minnesota. We don't want to make these costs more expensive to resolve our issues. We want to minimize the costs of seeking and receiving justice in our courts. And that's what, these, what this bill is intended to accomplish. Mr. Chairman. Senator Cohen. Mr. Chairman, I, and Senator Orban, I, I apologize for asking the question. I don't serve on the committee, so I haven't had the chance to listen to the explanation as to what the problem is, and, and I infer from your answer there really isn't a problem. So what concerns me when you discuss the, uh, the need to, um, uh, you know, that we're policymakers is, uh, and, and again, I have, have to make clear, I've never done work of this sort, um, so I don't presume to have anything personally at stake, but it concerns me when we, with, with such a broad stroke, eliminate uh, many of the protections for consumers in Minnesota. Obviously, a class action lawsuit, uh, as an example, is a means for a variety of people who've been harmed by some particular um, uh, problem. You know, it could be food poisoning, it could be something with, uh, uh, with a product defect. Um, but they're not able to engage a lawyer to solicit uh, uh, some type of, uh, or continue with some type of action um, where the damages might be limited, but, but significant. And the class action allows for a consolidation of interests to pursue it, uh, arguably uh, better for the, uh, uh, not only the plaintiffs, but the defense. Um, is it possible that uh, we would find a situation where depending on, again, the significance of the class, that uh, you'd have a number of uh, suits filed, so the defense would have to defend themselves over and over again. And if that hypothetical is not correct, then clearly what you're suggesting is we're looking for a way to eliminate um, uh, consumers from the courtroom. And that's what concerns me, because what I have not heard from you is whether or not there are any concerns in Minnesota with these actions. I mean, are the, are the courts overburdened with class action lawsuits? Um, are the courts just struggling to maintain what they can do with, uh, with consumer uh, types of, of lawsuits? We're going to hear a bill of yours, I, I think, next, if I'm not mistaken, uh, 
I think it's on the calendar, yeah, relative to uh, the increase in, in the limit for uh, uh, conciliation court, the jurisdictional limit. Um, as you know, in the Finance Committee, I had a couple questions about that, but ultimately supported the bill. Um, so on one hand, you're trying to uh, expand the ability for consumers to get access to the courts in a somewhat simpler way, but uh, on the other side, you're making an effort to take away significant consumer um, uh, opportunities. And it just seems to me, absent some uh, ability to delineate what the problem is, to quantify what the problem is, to indicate how this is burdensome to courts, to defendants, to companies, whoever it is, it seems to me that we should not walk into this uh, with eyes shut, and we should be aware of what the problem is in Minnesota. Further discussion on Senate File 149, Senator Latz. I ask for a roll call vote. Roll call is granted. Uh, Mr. Chairman and members, this is a really bad bill. Uh, this is a really bad bill. You know, reasonable minds can differ on the efficacy of a six year versus a four year statute of limitations. But this bill has a lot of problems with it. Number one, for those of you who are concerned about the integrity of the courts as a separate branch of government and their ability to set their own rules relating to litigation, this is a legislative encroachment into setting those court rules by defining when an appeal can be made during the litigation process. So for those of you who are lawyers and who care about the judicial independence and their ability to set their litigation rules, their court rules. This bill is a massive inf intrusion on that because what it does is under current judicial uh, court rules, you can't appeal a class action determination by the district court judge while the case is pending. You have to wait until the case is over when almost every issue can be appealed. There are very, very few issues in a litigation process that can be appealed on an interlocutory basis, which means that while the case is still pending in district court, this bill before you by statute would, would allow that appeal to take place as soon as the class action certification occurs near the beginning of the case. In addition, it would stop the case in its tracks while that appeal is happening. So potentially for a year or for two years while the appeal is going on through the State Court of Appeals to the State Supreme Court, potentially to the U.S. Supreme Court, nothing would be happening on the case and the defendants would have bought at least another year or two of time to potentially continue doing what they have been doing that is a basis for the violation of law. But certainly it's a massive intrusion in the court's own ability to control their litigation. Secondly, the effect of this would be to eviscerate Minnesota's consumer protection laws. And I can't overstate this, members, because it would impose such an incredible burden on the ability of plaintiffs, and specifically, yes, their lawyers, to prove a case in the litigation process that there wouldn't be any ability for them to bring the case in the first place. As a practical matter, lawyers will not be able to take on these broad class action consumer cases. Now, the consumer protection laws in Minnesota are specifically set up through uh, Section 8.31, the Private Attorney General statute, which is basically the enabling statute for Chapter 325F and the other consumer protection statutes to allow the lawyers to aggregate claims into a large lawsuit. Now, if you have a false advertising claim, let's say, for example, a retailer puts out a coupon or advertises something, you get 25 cents off 
but it's false, it's misleading, it's inaccurate, it's patently inaccurate, it, it violates the law. Let's say there's no doubt that it violates the law. What individual consumer is going to be willing to pay a lawyer to go after a 25 cent loss? No one will. But if a lawyer is able to aggregate claims among a vast class of consumers, that money adds up. That money adds up to the point where it's financially advantageous for a corporation to make that misleading statement or ad, knowing that most consumers aren't going to care enough or have the financial resources to bring a legal claim. And without the ability to aggregate these claims, the corporations would not be held accountable. So the consumer protection laws, which have had broad bipartisan support for decades in Minnesota, are important to protect the rights of all of us consumers. The effect of the bill before you would be to eliminate the ability of consumers and business who are also victims in these kinds of cases to hold companies accountable for fraudulent and deceptive acts. <laughs> In addition, because of the change that's included in this bill relating to the, uh, the proof required at the front end of a lawsuit, um, it would have the potential for massively increasing the burden on the courts. Because as a practical matter, you would the, the, the lawyers and the lead plaintiffs bringing the claims would have to have individual identifiable economic loss for each claimant or each member of the class in the lawsuit in district court before they could proceed with a case. Or they will be out of the, the case will be thrown out on summary judgment. The case will be thrown out without that level of proof. The cost and the burden and frankly just the sheer capacity of any lawyer bringing a claim under this law to be able to gather that information, even to find the individual consumers that have been harmed to the point of 25 cents or 50 cents on a misleading ad for oranges at a supermarket, for example. There's no way that they could find the information to identify a specific victim of that consumer fraud and have the proof that they were in fact victimized. So every one of your constituents that is misled by this, they're never going to have a remedy. They're never going to have a remedy. And the companies that do this, and sometimes they do it intentionally, sometimes they don't, but they're still uh, subject to the consumer protection statutes and they're held to certain standards and certainly when they are fraudulently doing this, they're held to an even more important standard. They will know that they can get away with it if this bill passes. Uh, this would be a radical change um, in Minnesota consumer protection laws. Uh, and so for any of you who are concerned about holding companies accountable for their advertising and for their marketing, uh, you need to oppose this bill. Uh, so I urge your uh, no vote on it. Further discussion on Senate File 149. Mr. Chairman. Senator Berglund. Um, Mr. Chairman and members, I also rise to share with you why I will be voting against this bill. My district is affected by the airport noise and originally uh, there was um, arrangements made by um, the airport to do noise abatement for a large section of South Minneapolis. Later, the MAC decided to take a portion of it out of their plan. And the city of Minneapolis brought a class action lawsuit on behalf of all those homeowners and they won. And so many of those homeowners are now getting, you know, additional storm windows, et cetera, to make their homes more noise proof. That class action lawsuit by the city of Minneapolis wouldn't have been able to take place if this law had been um, passed at that time. Um, and yet we all know that airport noise does affect home values. So 
Um, I just think this is a bill that we need to be careful and if there are certain kinds of abuses going on, then perhaps we should have a bill with a narrower focus. This bill has a very broad focus and I think it will affect people who should be able to bring class action lawsuits either on behalf of themselves and others or others on behalf of a large group. Thank you. Further discussion on Mr. Senate Chairman. File 149, Senator Cohen. Mr. Chairman, members, um, Senator Lyatt's uh, offered uh, some significant concerns about the bill, but I just want to make sure to follow up on what Senator Berglund said, that we understand that some of these class action lawsuits are not minimal kinds of suits. A common, uh, as an example, a very significant type of uh, class action suit have, have been the claims involving asbestos and uh, the effects of asbestos on the workers who unknowingly found themselves in situations where they had huge health concerns as a direct consequence of being exposed to asbestos um, in a way that was not known uh, as to what the harm might be. Uh, they went to work, they were earning a living for their families, uh, making what they thought was a good salary, and then found themselves at some point with uh, a ruined life and potentially uh, uh, fatal health complications. So to take that type of uh, ability away from a worker to join in a class action suit uh, to, def to pursue a claim that, again, is basically life-threatening is something that simply is unfair and egregious, um, uh, particularly since we do not have from the author some type of quantification as to what the problem is or, or why we're doing this. Um, additionally, Senator Latz, uh, indicated uh, his concern with the language that puts a requirement on the court to stop discovery. I thought when I read my paper on November 3rd, 2010, whatever uh, day it w was after the election, I thought we had elected a conservative legislature. That's what I've been told, that's what I've been told all session. Uh, apparently not. Apparently we elected a really radical legislature because when you start uh, combining the legislative branch with the judicial branch, that is clearly contrary to what we have done in this state, what has been done in this country. Uh, we have not interfered with the discovery process. In the time I've been in the Senate, I can only think of one other example where we dealt with the rules of the court, and that was an effort by county attorneys to secure a, a different order of final argument uh, in criminal matters. Uh, they asked for the opportunity to argue last uh, not first in summation to the jury. The legislature passed a bill saying that that would be the case, but the Supreme Court uh, made the request that this was highly irregular and understood the sense of the legislature, but said, we will draft a rule that comports with what you're suggesting, but let us draft the rule. This language does not leave any room for something of that sort. It says that absolutely discovery proceedings must be stayed. This would be a first as best I know. This is not a conservative act. This is a truly radical act relative to the separation of powers. Senator Artman. Thank you. Um, the hyperbole in here is pretty enormous. I, I gotta say, eviscerate. Um, to deprive of vital content or force to take out the entrails or disembowel. That's not what's happening in this bill. This is a common sense bill. It just says that if you want to file a lawsuit for false advertising, unlawful trade practices, or prevention of consumer fraud, that you actually have been damaged before you can maintain that lawsuit. That would not affect any lawsuit that was brought against the city of Minneapolis and the airport for noise. It has absolutely no application whatsoever. What we're talking about with respect to the interlocutory appeal is just asking our courts when there is so much at stake that they stop and pause and look to make sure that the district court's certification, which essentially multiplies the size of the lawsuit, uh, we ask that the Court of Appeals look at that decision. We haven't engaged in the discovery process, Senator Cohen. It has nothing to do with the discovery rules or process. It absolutely does not determine what the outcome should be. It just asks them to look and authorize that interlocutory appeal. And then one of the speakers, Mr. President, mentioned a fact, their concern that a lawyer would not want to bring a claim for 25 cents. 
I absolutely disagree with that, and I just want to give you a couple of examples of where class actions have gotten completely out of control. The blockbuster lawsuit, if you remember the late fees, um, the uh, actual plaintiffs in the class action were awarded a $1 coupon for the results of the class action. Guess how much the lawyers got? $9.25 million. I think those lawyers had a pretty good incentive to help those people that paid a late fee on a video rental bring a lawsuit, turn it into a class action, and get $9.25 million. There's plenty of incentive to file a class action for 25 cents. Same deal in an engine horsepower marketing case. The plaintiffs got $35, the lawyers got $37.66 million plus interest. There's a Minnesota case, uh, in Ray Arcadia, related to stock prices. The injured got a $500 coupon, the lawyers got more than a million dollars, right here in Hennepin County, Senator Cohen. There are, there's a list, it just goes on and on. The attorneys get millions of dollars for finding folks that have been damaged by false advertising or in a class action. They're very motivated to bring these lawsuits. There's no reason why they shouldn't bring these lawsuits. We want them to. We just want to make sure that once that class is certified by the court, there's a reason for the certification and that we don't have the certification being the very reason for the settlement. We want defendants, if they want to seek further review and obtain justice, not to have to do it with the threat of enormous costs of litigation. That's a very sensible reform. We're awful close to a vote here, Senator Latz. Senator Perry, I am uh, Mr. Chairman. I'm, I'm pleased that we are, and I'm also pleased that we have a history of, of fully discussing issues before the Senate body so that all members are fully informed when they get to vote. Uh, members, uh, Senator Ortman made a couple of comments that I think uh, we need to elucidate here on the floor. Uh, I think she was right about the definition of eviscerate. And I reiterate the term, because this bill would disembowel, as a practical matter, it would disembowel the consumer protection laws in Minnesota. Because as it is right now, individuals who seek to recover a settlement in a class action have to show actual proof that they were damaged under the law in order to participate in the settlement. The difference is that in the bill before you, they would have to show that actual proof and the people bringing the claim, the lawyers on behalf of the consumers bringing the claim, would have to show that actual proof for all of the consumers that they hope would participate in the recovery at the initial stages of the lawsuit. So they'd have to go out and they'd have to solicit from all five and a half million Minnesotans who might have been exposed to this fraudulent ad and get enough of them to come in and to make their claim and to show the ad and to show the receipt and then submit all of that to the court just to survive summary judgment. Class actions are a tool for judicial efficiency, members. It's a way of bringing suits on behalf of a broad swath of injured parties without burdening the courts with individual lawsuits for 100,000 people. And if you have to have all that information ahead of time, when you bring the lawsuit, it's gonna be an immense financial burden on the claimants bringing the lawsuit. And what Senator Ortman didn't tell you was that those cases where the lawyers made a lot of money, the, per the money that they made was a fraction, a percentage of the damages that were deemed to be provable and caused the defendant corporations to settle the case. So if they made a million dollars on it, damages would have been multiple millions of dollars, meaning consumers were injured to the tune of, and the corporations illegally benefited in the amount of millions of dollars. That's how the lawyers' fees are calculated. So yes, maybe a $1 coupon, all that points out, is that the individual consumer would never have found it financially advantageous to bring the claim alone. 
But the law is set up to encourage attorneys to take a look at these situations, to find these fraudulent situations, to be able to bring the claims, unless we want to add $100 million to the Attorney General's budget so they can be the ones bringing these claims, we need to leave in place the rules that facilitate private lawyers to bring these claims on behalf of the consumers. Senator Thompson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and uh, members. Um, Senator Ortman pointed out that there's been a lot of really heated rhetoric here. Boy, has there ever. Um, the fact is that uh, this uh, proposed legislation put forth by Senator Ortman in no way restricts or impedes the ability of a legitimate class action suit to go forward. So let's be clear, if you have a legitimate class with damages that is properly certified, class actions will go forward just fine. The opponents of this legislation would seem to want members to believe that this will result in an inability to enforce consumer protection laws. I would point out that there are a myriad of state and federal consumer protection laws, and there are agencies in place to enforce them, and there are attorneys employed by the state to bring lawsuits when necessary. So it's fine to oppose this legislation if you want to. But to make the argument that this will, um, you know, uh, w whatever grandiose adjective you choose to use, ultimately uh, completely eliminate the consumer protection laws in this state, in this nation, uh, is frankly over the top and silly. Senator Ortman. Mr. President, I just want to point out that not every potential plaintiff in a class has to show the damages before the class is certified. That's just not correct. In the point of, of certification, the court will look to determine whether there are a sufficient number of plaintiffs to certify a class, and then those plaintiffs will have to establish the damages. But in order to obtain the relief, then they would have to show the damages. So the timing is very important. We're asking the court to look at the certification of the class and nothing more. Any further discussion? S Senator Cohen. Has there been a request for roll call? Yes, there has. There being no further discussion, the question occurs on the motion of Senator Ortman that Senate File 149 be recommended to pass. Secretary will take the roll. All senators having voted, secretary will close the roll. Being there's 36 ayes and 26 nays, the motion prevails.